Shalom from Jerusalem and welcome to this program on the walls of Jerusalem. In this program, I am going to talk about the pipe dream of the two state solution and God's solution to this conflict. Uh, I think it's very important uh, that we uh, base our opinions on what the Bible says. And I'm going to begin by reading a scripture from the book of Joel, chapter 3 and verse 1 and 2. It says, For behold, in those days and at that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will enter into judgment with them there on behalf of my people and my heritage Israel, because they have scattered them among the nations and have divided up my land. Friends, it cannot be more clear than this. This is a text that is speaking about uh, when God is going to judge the nations of the world. As the Messiah is coming back to Jerusalem, he is going to take every nation on the planet into account for two things. Number one, because they have scattered his own people, Israel, to all the nations on the face of the earth. They have removed them, in other words, from their homeland because the Jewish people have never left this land voluntarily. This is the land that they come from and they have only left it because they have been forced to go into exile by the nations. And secondly, he will judge all the nations because they have divided God's own land. And this, of course, we know has also been fulfilled in history. Since the Jewish people came back here, uh, there has been several uh, decisions by the international community to divide God's own land. We know the most famous one was in 1948 in the, uh, or in 1947, I should say, in the vote in the uh, UN, the General Assembly of the United Nations, when they voted to uh, divide this land into a Jewish state and into an Arabic state. And then uh, in 1993, Israel began to uh, hold negotiations, which later on led to the so-called Oslo Accords for a two-state solution to this conflict. Now, this is a solution that has never worked. Uh, it has, the nations have been working on this now for over 20 years and it is still no closer to an end to this conflict than it was 23 years ago when uh, the Oslo Accords were signed. Uh, but also this is a solution that is in direct opposition to what God says in his word. But not only that, it is also in opposition to history and the uh, rights of the Jewish people to their own land. And that's very important to point that out. Um, I read a, a number of years ago about the speech that, in fact, I saw it on YouTube that Prime Minister Netanyahu held in New York many years before he became the Prime Minister of Israel. And there he outlined his view of the conflict and that he did not believe in a two-state solution, um, but that the Jewish people have a right to their entire homeland between the Jordan River and the Mediterranean Sea. Well, in the audience was an Arab who um, said, I am a Palestinian and I just want, you to, want to ask you, what are you to do with me? Where I'm supposed to fit into all of this? And I don't remember that Netanyahu gave any good answer to this man, but I, I want to, to know that there is an answer to this conflict. And that is what I'm going to talk about in this program. Because just as uh, the African-American people in the United States, just because there are racial conflicts with uh, the white population, there is uh, still some problems today uh, in America between the white and the black community. 
no one has ever suggested that the solution to that conflict is uh, for the black people or the African Americans to have their own state and for the white people to have their own state because that there is no basis in history for that likewise there is no basis in history for uh, an arab uh, palestinian state in the holy land and how can i say that well um, first of all the Jewish people have a history in this land that goes back 3,500 years ago, ever since the days of Joshua, the son of Nun. And so since that time, for 3,500 years, there has been a continued Jewish presence, except for some brief periods of time, there's been a continued Jewish presence in this land for this entire time. The Jewish people are not strangers to this land. Uh, they have been here for over 3,000 years. And so they have their history here and they have their origins here. And this is where they belong. And that is the reason why the entire international community recognize that historic right by the Jewish, uh, of the Jewish people to have uh, a sovereign state in this land that was called Palestine at that time. There was not one voice of opposition. It was a unanimous uh, decision made by uh, the League of Nations in 1922 to grant the Jewish people their own homeland here in what was then called Palestine. So what about the Palestinians? Why, di why didn't they recognize the right of the Palestinians to a state? There's a very simple answer, because the Palestinian people did not exist in 1922. Not even in 1948, after many decades of conflict, and I'm going to tell you a little bit why that conflict came about. But during that, uh, uh, that vote in the United Nations in 1947, to divide this land. There was never a decision to divide it between a Jewish state and a Palestinian state. Because once again, the people of uh, Palestinian people did not exist in 1948. But they voted to divide this land in a Jewish state and an Arabic state. Now, you have to understand in 1922, when the world uh, international community uh, recognized the historic right of the Jewish people to their own state here in Palestine, they at the same time also gave the Arabs their own states, Lebanon, Syria, Iraq, Jordan, uh, Saudi Arabia, and of course Egypt already existed, but these were the Arabic states that the international community recognized. But here, in what was called then Palestine, there was never any recognition of the right of an indigenous Palestinian people to their own land here, and that the Jewish people needed to share this land with such a people. Because the invention of the Palestinian people it, it came about actually through the KGB the, in the Soviet Union era when they sought for uh, an influence in the Middle East. And they, as they also sought influence worldwide, they supported indigenous uh, people's right to their own land. And so they came up with the thought that the Palestinians were the indigenous people here and that they needed to fight for the right to their own land. Because at that time, uh, which was in the uh, 1960s, the Israel was aligned with the United States and the Soviet Union wanted an influence here in the Middle East. So they began to support what was then called PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization. And they began to groom Yasser Arafat to develop uh, a Palestinian national identity. Entity. And that's the, that's the goods that they have sold to the worldwide community ever since. And more and more of the nations of the world have accepted that um, false uh, description of history. But it's very important to understand there has never been a Palestinian state ever in history.
There's never been any Palestinian leader before uh, 1922. The world history doesn't know about it. Uh, of course, as I said, the Jewish people have a history here for 3,500 years. Uh, Mahmoud Abbas, the leader of the Palestinian Authority, he claims that the Palestinians, they have a hi history here going back to either 7,000 or 9,000 years, depending on, uh, you know, what uh, his mood is for the day when he makes those claims. It's absurd. There has never been so. In the Bible, this land is called the land of Israel, both in the prophetic writings, the so-called Old Testament, and in the New Testament. Let me just read you one text that shows this uh, in Matthew chapter 2, when the angel of God is appearing to Joseph, and uh, we are going to read from verse 19 in Matthew chapter 2. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose and took the child and his mother and went to where? To Palestine? No, to the land of Israel. Palestine did not exist uh, at the, the time when the Gospels were written. That was something that came about in the second century after the Romans drove out all the, Jew the Jews from the land and renamed it uh, into, from Israel into uh, Palestine or Syria, Palestina. So this is uh, an invention by the enemies of God that have scattered his people to the nations of the world. And that is not something that God is given any approval of. The angel of the Lord called the land Israel, and that's what we should call the land as well. Palestine is an invention by the enemies of God's people. And uh, there, during this time, uh, uh, when the Bible was written, Arabic was never spoken here in the land. Uh, it was Hebrew. In the, uh, the people, the apostles and, and, and Jesus, Yeshua himself, spoke Hebrew primarily here in the land, or Aramaic, as some say, but for sure not Arabic. Arabic is a foreign language to this, uh, to this land. So an indigenous Arabic Palestinian people that has been in existence here before the Jewish people, Sorry, but that is a lie. And the, uh, the Arab nations, or the Arab leaders, I should say, uh, used to also agree with that, that Palestine was an invention that did not come from the Arabs themselves. And they have never seen this area as separate from the Arabic homeland consisting of the rest of the uh, na Arabic nations here in the Middle East. So what is the solution to the conflict? Well, we need to understand how did the conflict begin? Because after 1922, when the nations recognized the Jewish people's right to their own uh, state here in Palestine, the conflict began through a Muslim imam uh, here in Jerusalem called uh, Amin el Husseini, who later on become the clo a close friend of Hitler and the Nazis. And he began to stir up hatred against the Jewish people here in the land based on the teachings of Islam and the Quran. And that is the reason to the conflict here. So the conflict will never be solved by creating two states. The land area is too small that that would ever give, um, uh, solve the problem and give peace. Uh, the only solution is for there to be reconciliation between Jews and Arabs. And that can never happen as long as the people here of the Arabs are fed a steady diet of hatred for the Jewish people through the Imams and through the teachings uh, of the Quran. Because the Quran declares in Surah 5 that the Jewish people are the greatest enemies of Allah. And that because of the Jewish people being so despicable and bad, Allah has changed them into the descendants of apes and pigs. And the, the saying here in the Middle East among the Muslims is that Palestine is ours and the Jews are our dogs. 
So the very idea that the Jewish people should have sovereignty in the midst of the Arabic nations in the Middle East is an affront to the teachings of Islam. Even though, in fact, the Quran also recognizes that Allah gave this land to the Jewish people. But of course, just like the replacement theology among Christians, uh, they teach that the Jewish people have failed their, the favor of Allah, and, and so he has cursed them to become uh, the enemies of Allah. And that's why the Islam is, uh, is commanding its followers to hate the Jewish people. So, Palestine, listen to this carefully, Palestine is a racist, anti-Semitic project to take away the Jewish people from their own land. And you cannot support that and be a good follower of Yeshua, Jesus of Nazareth. It is impossible because let me just give you one uh, more passage from the uh, New Testament or the apostolic writings from Luke chapter 21 to see what Yeshua himself is saying about this land. In verse 24, and specifically about Jerusalem, because Yeshua predicted that the Jewish people would be dispersed. Jerusalem would be conquered by the Romans. And uh, this is what he's saying in verse 24. They, that, talking about the Jewish people, will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive among all nations. Here you have it again, just the same as in Joel chapter 3, that the Jewish people have been led captive to all the nations. And then it says, and Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles. See here that Jesus is calling Jerusalem an occupied, downtrodden city when the Gentiles rule over it. The very opposite to what the, the world community say today. But that is what Yeshua, our master, is saying. And is, but he says there will come an end to that. It will be trodden underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled or are fulfilled. So that is what we need to pray for, because when the time of the Gentiles are fulfilled, the Messianic era will dawn upon the world with peace and righteousness and joy in the Holy Spirit to all the nations of the world. And that is what we're longing for. That is the true justice for this land. So the two-state solution, it is uh, not only uh, historically unjust, it is also uh, an, a pipe dream because the conflict is not based on uh, land areas. It's based on a racial, uh, religious, Jew-hating um, uh, conflict from the, from the uh, religion of Islam. And so that is what we're talking about here. Now, one of the greatest um, scholars and experts on the Middle East and specifically the Arab world in the world today, which is Dr. Um, uh, uh, Kedar at the Barilan University in Tel Aviv. He, he says that the greatest danger to the state of Israel is the so-called peace movement. Wow, how can he say that? It is because in the Middle East, a, a longing for peace is interpreted as a sign of surrender. And that is like inviting attack from the enemy to destroy you. That's how the talk of peace is understood in the Middle East. It is no different than during the World War II when uh, Churchill stood up and he, he said in the conflict with Hitler and the Nazi regime in Germany, he said, I have nothing to promise you, he, he talk, said to his own people in Britain, but blood, sweat and tears. Now, that, the, the, that blood and sweat and tears eventually defeated Hitler, defeated Germany and gave peace to Europe. And it's the same in the Middle East. Peace movements will never lead to peace. 
uh, and, and the talk of surrendering land, specifically the very historic homeland of the Jewish people in Judea and Samaria, to give that up to a people that are ingrained with hatred for the Jewish people. It's stupidity. And that is just only interpreted as an invitation to come and take it all. So we need to pray for this situation, friends, uh, that the, the right peace will come. And ultimately, it will only come through the Messiah. But until then, Israel needs to be strong. And it is only a movement, a strong movement that is willing to sacrifice blood, sweat and tears to protect this land from their enemies that will create peace. Secondly, it has been proven in the short history here in the Middle East that every area that Israel has declared as a sovereign, uh, Jewish people's sovereignty over that area has led to the prosperity of both Jew and Arab. So the one state solution of Israeli sovereignty between the R Jordan River and the Mediterranean, it is a blessing not only for the Jewish people, if you love the Arabs, that's the best solution also for them, including the, the so-called Palestinians. The Palestinians themselves know that. They don't want to live under this corrupt, Jew-hating, uh, warmongering and hate-inciting uh, regime of the Palestinian Authority. If they can choose, they want to live under Israeli authority. And so we need to pray for boldness for the, for the Israeli government to dare to declare sovereignty in all of the land of Israel, including Judea and Samaria. Now, 15 years ago, that was pretty hard and difficult to say the, those words. But today, 23 years after the so-called Oslo Accords, Many, if not most, people who can think for themselves understand that this two-state solution is a pipe dream. It doesn't work. It has not produced uh, peace at all. In fact, every area in recent history over the past hundred years that the Jewish people have surrendered to their enemies have always become a launching pad for increased warfare against the Jewish state. So God knows what he's talking about when he's going to judge all the nations of the world for dividing this land. There is a reason for it and uh, we need to be on God's side. So we need to pray for boldness of the Israeli government to declare sovereignty over all of the state of Israel, including Judea and Samaria. And as I said, that was quite controversial to say uh, 15 years ago. But today, more and more voices here in Israel are being uh, uh, raised up and being heard, I should say, um, saying this is the only solution to the conflict. And we have to understand that uh, surrendering land to the enemies of Israel will only endanger the people of Israel. It just, it is a horrible expression of pride when the state of Israel says we can defend ourselves even if we give the Palestinians their own state. We're strong enough. We, we don't have to be, that's arrogance. It's only God that has helped Israel to prevail in the conflicts so far. And they cannot continue to just take that for granted and test God by allowing the Palestinians to have their own state. It will be taken over with, by Hamas in an instant as soon as Israel uh, moves out from those areas. And just as they are digging tunnels right now from Gaza into Israel to uh, plan for, uh, for murderous attacks, they will continue to dig those tunnels in the mountains, cropping up right in the Ben Gurion airport if there is a Palestinian state uh, in, in, west of the Jordan River. Friends, let's not live in a pipe dream of lies. 
Let's accept the truth and let's pray in line with the truth. Let's pray that there will be peace here through a strong Israel, number one, and ultimately through Israel uh, calling out to the Messiah to welcome him back here uh, to take over and to defeat their enemies. And we know ex eventually that is what is going to happen because the whole world, the Bible says in many, many places, the nations of the world will gather against Jerusalem to make war against it. And the only solution in the end to that conflict is the return of the Messiah. And we are called to prepare the way for him. But we must pray meanwhile uh, that Israel does not surrender more land to its enemies. If you love the Jewish people, if you love the Arabic people, you must pray for a sovereign Jewish state uh, between the river, Jordan River and the Mediterranean. And moreover, we need to pray that the uh, Palestinian project, as I call it, to create a Palestinian state, it is a racist, anti-Semitic project from the very beginning. And the goal of that project has never changed. It is to destroy the state of Israel and eventually to wipe out the Jewish people. Hamas, they are declaring in their charter their war to the very end to kill every Jew, not just in Israel, around the world. And it's just like uh, I saw in a cartoon uh, uh, just recently how um, the leaders of the world, especially um, the Foreign Minister John Kerry, Secretary of State of the United States, sitting with the Israeli government, with Prime Minister Netanyahu, while in the background Hamas is screaming, kill every Jew, and, and John Kerry is asking uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu, pleading with him, can't you at least meet them halfway? How can you, how can you negotiate? How can you meet halfway with an agenda to kill every Jew. Friend, I hope you have realized that I have spoken the truth to you today. And now you know the truth. And now you need to take a stand on that truth and begin to fight for the right of the Jewish people to their own land and pray for it. God bless you and Shalom from Jerusalem.